Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you guys how to figure out if you need to trim and where exactly you're going to trim, okay? So what you need is a ruler. I've got a metal one and an acrylic one because I'm going to show you how to use both of these. You need a pencil and eraser, okay? You need a pencil and eraser. So uh, with the acrylic one, so if you have a clear acrylic ruler, hopefully you guys can see this. Eh, put it over here. So what you can see on the ruler, okay, is that the measurements do not start at the end of the ruler, okay? It's a little out of focus, but I think you can still see it, okay? So if you have one of those clear acrylic ones, again, the measurements do not start at the end of it. Rather, they start where it says zero, okay? I'm not going to actually use this one um, for the video just because it's too hard to see since it is clear. But for those of you who have one, that's how you're going to read that one. Um, I'm going to be using this metal one. So if you look at the metal ones, the measurements do start at the end of the ruler. Okay? So the only measurement that you need to uh, use for this, and even when we move on to the black paper, how to kind of where to glue our project to, all you need to know is how to measure an inch. Okay? So we want that inch. So if you guys look at my drawing that I have here, now obviously this is an unfinished drawing, but I'm going to go ahead and use it. Um, you can tell that, you know, I don't have that much space left over here on the sides, so obviously I don't need to trim anything off of those. And then if you look below the, the shoe here, I have, you know, what I would consider an adequate amount of space there. But when you look here at the top, I do have what I would consider probably too much paper still left. Now, if I had finished this drawing and I had my laces, I might think differently, okay? Because obviously my, my tie for the shoe would probably be above here, and that might take up the space, but I don't have it on there. So, what we're going to do, I want you to look at your drawing, and I want you to ask yourself, where do you think you have some extra paper? Again, some of you guys might not have any extra paper at all, okay? And you may not, you may not need to trim, but I'm going to. What you're going to do, identify what the... And I'm going to just deal with the top, so for those of you who think you need to trim the top, you want to find the tallest point of your drawing, okay? So find the tallest point of the drawing. Again, this is just for those of you who think you need to trim something off the top. What I want you guys to do is I want you to measure one inch off of the top of your drawing. And again, this is just for those of you who think you need to trim something off the top. If you don't feel like you need to trim anything at the top, you should not be doing this. Now, you should be using a 4-H pencil to make the mark, and you want to make it lightly. Again, just because I'm doing this video, I'm going to be using a regular pencil so it's nice and dark and you can see it. But you should be drawing your lines lightly. Okay? Now, if you think, and I'm going to lift this drawing up a little bit so you guys can see the bottom. If you think you have too much paper, I need you guys to listen. If you think you have too much paper at the bottom of your drawing, then you need to identify the lowest point of your drawing, and you need to measure one inch off of that. Now, when I put my ruler up here, if you guys can kind of see this, I have almost an inch and a half of paper left on here. Now, to me, that's not enough to trim. So I'm okay with leaving an inch and a half of paper left there, so I'm not going to trim anything off the bottom. I'm just going to leave it. So the only, where I'm gonna, only place I'm going to trim for this one is up here in this top area. Again, some of you might find that you have nothing you need to trim, and that's fine. So after you make that mark, see, we're, I'm going to be um, helping you guys to, I'm going to be actually cutting this for you on the paper cutter. I need to know where to cut. This dot does not help me use the paper cutter. So what you need to do, I'm going to use your ruler. You want to take the end of your ruler, and you want to match it up to the edge of your paper. This will ensure that you are actually drawing a straight line. Now, here's what's funny, is that some people, even though they have a ruler, can't draw a straight line. Okay, so look at this. You know, they have their ruler on the paper crooked, okay, it's at a diagonal. So that's not going to give me a straight line. To make sure that I'm doing, a, I'm going to draw a straight line, I'm going to match up the edge of my ruler to the edge of my paper, and I'm going to lift it up here so that it matches the mark that I put on there. That will ensure that I'm actually drawing a really nice straight line, and it's going to be perpendicular to my left edge here, or my right edge. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and lightly draw my line across from edge to edge like this. Again, I'm going to be drawing my line dark so you guys can see on the video. You should be doing it very lightly. Okay? So that tells me where I need to actually trim my paper on the paper cutter. Okay? So what I want everybody to do right now is go ahead and draw those lines where you think you need to trim your paper. Again, if you don't need to do anything, then that's fine. And then I'm going to call you up one table at a time, and I'm going to trim your paper for you at the paper cutter. All right, so the next step, guys, okay, everybody should have, and everybody to listen, everybody should have a black piece of paper, okay, and your project and some rubber cement. You still should have access to the pencil and to uh, your ruler. Now, I'm going to kind of adjust this. So you guys can see the entire piece of paper here. Okay. All right, so I have that finished example up on the board. What we need to do is we need to figure out where we're going to put the drawing, okay? Now, I am going to be using a white colored pencil to mark my black paper so you guys can see it, but you should, again, be using a pencil, okay? But I'm just doing it this way so you guys can see my mark, okay? So I want you to go ahead and put your drawing kind of off to the side. So you just have your black paper. And I want you to take your ruler and I want you to put the end of the ruler all the way over here to the left side of your paper. Now again, you should have your paper horizontal. So it's nice and long like this, okay? Or wide. Okay, so again, have the end of your ruler all the way over here to the left. And then what you want to do is take your pencil, again, I'm using white colored pencil, and you're going to make a mark right here at the one inch mark. Try to zoom in so you guys can see it. So again, I'm all the way over here on the left side. I, well, if you listen, I'm using a white colored pencil so you guys can see it on the screen. You should be using a regular pencil. Okay. So you guys should, again, put your ruler on the very far left. You're going to make a mark at the one-inch mark right here, and then you're done with your ruler for right now. Okay. So I'm going to zoom back out so you can see my whole paper. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put, go ahead and put your drawing back on top of your black paper. I want you to look at this. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue down eventually our project so that it's all the way over here, matched up to our one inch mark. And you want equal and minus space above and below your drawing. Now everybody's spacing on the top and bottom is going to be a little bit different just because everybody trimmed their project differently. Okay? So you want it to match. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you guys how to um, add the rubber cement to your project. Now. We use rubber cement for our project because, one, it's not a permanent adhesive. Uh, if we use, like, Elmer's white glue, uh, the problem with it is that it, because it's a water-based glue, it actually uh, soaks through the paper, kind of bubbles up wherever you have the glue. This does not do that, okay? Um, it's not a permanent adhesive, but if you overuse it and use too much of it, it's never, your project's never coming off of the black paper, so you have to be very careful with it, okay? So I'm going to kind of zoom back in. I'm going to show you guys how to use this. Now, I wouldn't do this quite yet. Watch me do this once. So when you open up your jar, okay, I just filled these up, so be careful. You want to wipe off the most of the, the glue that's on the brush. Okay. You don't need a lot. Again, too much is too much. So you're just going to take that and you're going to just brush the glue into the corner and then create like kind of an arrow look to get it into the middle. And that's all you need to do for each corner. So again, I'm going to take my rubber cement. i to get it in the camera there. I'm going to take my rubber cement, dip it in. I'm going to take off a lot of the excess. I'm going to put it into the corner like so and then just stretch it down to the middle. So it looks like an arrow in each corner. 
So you guys can go ahead and do that. Just remember, you do not need a lot of glue. Get rid of a lot of that on the brush before you use it. Yes, even if you're not done. Remember what I said, guys, at the beginning of the class period. Everybody mounts and labels, regardless if you're finished. You can still work on the project after it's on the black paper, but everybody needs to see these steps. All right, now, after you're done, and I'm going to zoom back out here. You want to see this, okay? So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your project, you're going to flip it over, and the thing again, it's nice that it, it doesn't dry fast. It's not a fast drying glue. So I'm going to match it up with that mark I have here. I'm not going to press it down yet until I check to make sure that it's the same. I've got it evened up here on the top and bottom border. And I'm just going to take my hand and just kind of... That looks pretty even. Test it again. Once I'm confident that I have it even on the top and bottom, and my um, it's matched up over here to that one inch mark I have on the left side, then I'm going to press it down. And even if it's a little off, I can still move it because the glue hasn't dried yet. It, it, it takes a little while for the glue to dry, so you can even kind of move it. And then once I'm confident it's where it needs to be, I'm going to press it down. So I'm going to give you guys a chance to do that, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, next step, guys. So again, I'm just going to repeat myself on some of the things I said off camera. If you get any rubber cement on your project in a place you don't want it, the trick is, is to let it dry first, and then you just rub it off with your finger, and it just, it just rolls off. Okay. Um, that's the easiest way to deal with that. Um, because you guys did watercolor paint on your paper also too, the paper is kind of wrinkly, so if you put books on top of your project while it's drying against the black paper, that will help it to kind of flatten out a little bit. It's not going to solve all the problems, but it's fine. So what you should have right now is a label and a Sharpie in your hand, okay? So make sure you have a Sharpie and a label. I'm going to just turn my project over so that when I'm filling this out, I'm not getting ink in places I don't want. So I'm going to turn that over. So I've got it now on the back. And I'm going to zoom in. We can see this. There we go. So if you go to a museum or a gallery or an art show, every piece of work there is going to have a label with it. And on that label is going to be sort of look the basics about the piece, who the artist is, the media, title. Um, now, obviously, they're not taking a class, so you won't see class on there, but you'll see other info information on there. Sometimes it includes like a little story. If you're in a museum, they might have a little story as to how the piece was created. So for these, here's the thing. This is part of your presentation grade, so everything has to be nice and neat. This is you presenting your work to the world, basically. So you want to make a nice impression. So whatever you do, write with the nicest, neatest handwriting you have, and you want to make sure that you are properly capitalizing your information, okay? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill out artist. That will be your first and last name. And again, make sure you properly capitalize it, okay? I'm going to go ahead and fill in my name for this, since this is my drawing. Again, nice and neat handwriting. First and last name. Capitalize the first letter in your first name and capitalize the last or the first letter in your last name. All right, the next thing is media. Okay? Media is the materials that we use to create the piece of work, okay? So I would watch me do this first before you do it, okay? I'm going to write down watercolor. Watercolor is one word. And then I'm going to use the and sign, and I'm going to put marker. So it's going to be watercolor and marker. 
Now, if I had more room, I would probably put watercolor paint, and I would also put pen and pencil down on there, but we don't have a whole lot of room, so we're going to kind of shorten it. If you mess up, you can feel free to grab yourself another label. Okay, the next thing on there is title. I'll talk about that last. So I'm going to skip and go to class, okay? Now, you need to make sure that you do this right. Uh, your class names are, are names, so they need to be properly capitalized, okay? So again, I would watch me write this first before you do it. The name of this class is Fine Art One, so that's what I'm going to write down on here. And for one, I'm going to use the Roman numeral. And then because there are six different Fine Art One classes, you need to put your class period on here. So I'm not going to write a class period on here since I have four classes. I don't want to confuse anybody. So if your first period, you should put period one. If your second period, you should put period two. If your third period, period three, so on and so forth, okay? That's how you'll write the class name. I'll put that kind of towards the top so those of you in the back can see it. All right, so title. The title of a painting or drawing or a piece of artwork is the same as a title to a song, a story, a book, okay? Again, it needs to be properly capitalized, okay? Now, with your titles also, too, they need to connect to the piece that they're, that they're a title to, okay? So, and I'll go ahead and turn this over. So, you know, obviously, I did a drawing of a shoe, okay? I'm not going to title this piece uh, Bunny Rabbits and Cotton Candy because that has absolutely nothing to do with my shoe. Okay? I don't know how you could even make that work. Um, so you want to give it a title that connects to the object. Do you have to use the word shoe in it? Absolutely not. Okay? So the shoe that I was drawing was a Nike shoe. So what I'm going to do, I'll zoom back into this. Again, do not copy my title. I don't want to see 50 of these turned in. I'm going to call this one Nike Dreams. Okay, so that's going to be the name of my piece because I did it. I drew a Nike shoe. You can again pick anything you want. It has to connect to the piece and it has to be properly capitalized. Okay, but again, it doesn't have to have the word shoe in it. So be creative about it if you want. So I'll give you a minute to fill out your title, and then we'll move on. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to zoom back out so you can see the whole thing, is all about where this is going to go, okay? Again, you've got a finished example on the board, so if you have any questions, you can look at that. This label, and I'm not going to glue it down yet, I just want to show you where it's going to go. It's going to go right here. It's going to be lined up with the bottom of your drawing, just like so. And there's going to be just a little bit of space between the artwork and the label. So do not put your label on top of your drawing and don't put your label under your drawing. You just want a little bit of space between the two. And it's going to be lined up at the bottom there. Once you've got it, then you can go ahead and put your rubber cement on the back. Again, Take off a lot of that glue off the brush. Go ahead and put your glue, your rubber cement, around the outer edges. And again, this is just going to go right here. Make sure that it's lined up with your drawing. And you're going to have a little bit of space between the artwork and the label. So there's a little bit of black showing through there. And that's all that we need to do for the mounting and labeling part. There are still a few steps that I have to demonstrate to you guys. So keep that in mind. Once you guys finish this, you can continue to work on your drawing.